So good morning, everybody. Welcome to our today's seminar. Uh, as usual, we have uh, a hybrid uh, seminar. That means that uh, some people are here in the audience and uh, we welcome everybody who has connected uh, from outside. Uh, we may start immediately. Uh, the, today's seminar is uh, a continuation on the line of research on uh, quantum chaos that is taking place the last years uh, in our institute. And the speaker is Anas Jemos, who is the expert on that field. Uh, I don't think that we need any further introductions. Anas, you may start. Hello to everyone. Uh, so again, hello to everyone. Today we are going to talk. Today we are going to talk uh, about House and uh, Born's rule in multi-qubit Bohmian systems. This is a line of research. Um, with professor supervised by Professor George Kondoblos, um, which takes place here in uh, our center since 2019. And there is a series of about seven works uh, on this uh, topic. So outline of the, of the talk, we are going to take, uh, we are going to introduce the Bohmian trajectories very quickly some open questions, and actually one single uh, main question of Bohmian mechanics. We are going to introduce uh, our Bohmian qubits made by coherent states of the harmonic oscillator. We are going to make a short review uh, of the nodal point x point complex mechanism, which was um, introduced here uh, in ARCAM back in 2007 by Professor Kondopoulos and Christos Afiniopoulos. And finally, we are going to talk about our findings, our results regarding Born's rule and the dynamical approximation to Born's rule by initial distributions of Bohmian particles, which do not obey Born's rule, which do not satisfy. Uh, okay, perfect. So, Bohmian mechanics is an alternative interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is a trajectory-based theory. In Bohmian quantum mechanics, in, in sharp uh, contrast with the standard quantum mechanics, the quantum particles are guided by the wave function, the usual wave function, which is the solution of Schrodinger's equation. Uh, and the evolution is described, is dictated by the so-called Bohmian equations of motion, which are deterministic and first order in time uh, differential equations uh, about the positions of the quantum particles. Okay. You see here a critical quantity, this G, which is <laughs> the dominator, which vanishes when we go to the so-called nodal points. The nodal points are defined as the, the, uh, the points where psi, the wave function, becomes zero. Okay. And there, very close to the nodal points, uh, we have a, a, a spiral motion of the Bohmian particles in a very fast spiral motion of the, uh, of the Bohmian particles. Um, it was always believed that chaos in Bohmian quantum mechanics um, is produced somewhere close to the nodal points. But here in the center, uh, we found that very close to the, a moving nodal point because uh, everything here is dynamical. Uh, we find almost always a hyperbolic unstable point, which was called by Christos and Professor the X point, okay, uh, which scatters the incoming particles and in the long run, many scatter and produce. Hub. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Together, the nodal point uh, and the X point form what we call a nodal point X point complex. Okay. 
which is a, a characteristic geometrical structure of the Bohmian flow close in the close neighborhood of the nodal point. So this is about dynamical systems. Okay, but what's the meaning of all of them? Uh, can we say something about the physics? Um, in Bohmian quantum mechanics, uh, a, a big difference between Bohmian quantum mechanics and uh, standard, the usual quantum mechanics, is uh, that Born's rule in Bohmian mechanics is not an axiom. Okay. While in standard quantum mechanics, the probability density of, find, of finding a particle in a certain region uh, between x and x plus dx is given by the usual um, absolute squared uh, psi. In Bohmian mechanics, one can in principle start with a initial distribution which does not satisfy Bohm's rule. But never, uh, we have never doubt about the validity of uh, Bohm's rule. So what is the role of chaos and maybe entanglement in the dynamical approximation of Bohm's rule in Bohmian quantum mechanics? Bohm's rule is just a typical situation. There is, this is one of the two main Bohmian schools about uh, this topic. Some people say that Bohm's rule, it's just the typical state. Uh, there is a theory about this, um, uh, about this topic, the topic of typicality in Bohmian quantum mechanics. Here, we support, we advocate the idea that, no, if we start, uh, if we study the dynamical behavior of Bohmian trajectories, which are either ordered or chaotic, and for a given system, ordered and chaotic trajectories in general coexist, then, and only then, we can say something about the, the, the nature of Bohm's rule in Bohmian quantum mechanics. Okay. So, our model consists of qubits. As you may know, I am coming, my PhD was in quantum information, in quantum information theory. So I, I was, excuse me. In Yen, so, uh, excuse me, uh, in English, the, uh, the Bohmian equations of motion um, are derived if we insert psi okay, uh, in, uh, in a polar form, if we take the polar decomposition, if we take psi equal. It's a function of psi. Okay. So if we insert this psi inside Schrodinger's equation. Where did you find this psi? We say that is that it, psi is the solution of the Schrodinger equation. In general, in general. And it is a, a, a cost. Distribution assumes an initial condition. Initially at t equals minus infinity or whatever, t equals zero. The, the no, no, I, I, I don't think that we have to make such an assumption. We just take that psi is, an, is, um, is a complex field. Okay, and if we insert it in the Bohmian in the Schrodinger's equation, then the Schrodinger's equation uh, splits in two parts. Yes, imaginary and uh, in real parts. But psi in quantum mechanics follows the distribution of particles of density of the yes. So if if you, if you proceed by this pr procedure. Then you, you find two equations of motion. One is the continuity equation, which is a continuity equation if we take R rho equal to psi squared. 
uh, maybe but side you can see it as an evolution function that tells you at equals zero the particles are here at equals one two three four they will move to other places okay so you can you can think of psi as an evolution a function that tells you how the distribution of particles will evolve with time but that particular solution that you chose assumes that at equals zero, the particles are here. The distribution is this, psi of t equals zero. There is a certain distribution. If you had a different distribution at t equals zero, you would have gotten a different psi. So how is it possible to have the particles say that they follow the psi according to Bohmian mechanics? <laughs> But at t equals zero, they will have a different distribution from what psi In has at t equals zero. No, no, no. But at t equals zero, no. the psi that it has is the one that corresponds to the distribution. No, no, no. I don't. Uh, excuse me. Uh, may I answer now? If you have time. If no, not, uh, there are too many. Uh, okay. Then we are good. maybe we can talk in, in private. Uh, so here we work uh, with qubits. A qubit is uh, a quantum system which has two well-defined states. The one state is called zero and the other state is called one, as in the case of the classical bit. Uh, but a qubit can be written uh, as a superposition of um, the basis states, the states, states zero and one, where C1 uh, and C2 uh, equals, uh, is equal to one. If we satisfy Bones rule. The quantum interference between zero and one is responsible for the different behavior of qubits in comparison with classical bits. That's why qubits are uh, the basic prerequisite for all the quantum algorithm uh, protocols. And their physical realization is not unique. There are many candidates uh, about the construction uh, of a qubit. Some of them are spin candidates, spin-based qubits, some there are photonic qubits, there, there's a lot about discussion about um, the physical construction of a qubit. So we try to study states of the harmonic oscillator and a very distinguished class of states is the so-called coherent states. The coherent states of the harmonic oscillator are the most, the, the most close to the classical states of the harmonic oscillator. And they are found to have the minimum uh, uncertainty. Thus, they, their behavior resembles closely that of a classical harmonic oscillator. Uh, mathematically, now maybe uh, this is a little bit difficult, they are defined as the eigenstates of the annihilation operator associated to the eigenvalue alpha, where alpha is a, a complex number uh, since. Alpha is not Hermitian. Their wave function is a little bit difficult, but okay. We are here in position to define our qubit states by the coherent states of the harmonic oscillator. And you say that you, for t equals zero, we have constructed a coherent state which uh, uh, lies at the right part uh, of the center of the oscillation and uh, a red one uh, at the left hand side, uh, at the left side of the oscillation. Okay. And since coherent states in general do not have, they are, they, they are not orthogonal, two arbitrary coherent states are not orthogonal. However, we can model them to come close, we can engineer them in order to have a close to orthogonal inner product in the Hilbert space. And we are working with parameters such that uh, the coherent states that we work with can be the base states psi r, psi right, and psi left, psi l, okay, which can be the base states uh, if you want to call it uh, zero or one of a qubit. So you can write our uh, wave vector as alpha r and b times l, okay. Our entangled qubits are, are composed as tensor products of these states. So if we are working with two uh, qubits, then we have C1 
RR and C2LL. If we are working with, excuse me, three qubits, it's, it is a triple product here. And if we are working, if we work with four qubits, then we have uh, four parts in the product here. Okay. From a Bohmian perspective, uh, if we take two qubits, then we can plot directly in the 3D uh, space uh, psi squared, okay, the probability density. And we find that um, entanglement plays uh, a significant role in the size, on the size of the two close to Gaussian blobs, uh, 3D blobs, which are moving in the configuration space. So these are the two areas where psi squared is obviously not negligible. They are wandering around the configuration space and sometimes they, they uh, produce collisions. And again, they are, they are born again. And this uh, goes um, every now and then in time. So here we have um, entangled, a partially entangled state with a given entanglement. And here we have a partial entangled state which, uh, with um, much smaller entanglements. And if we uh, take C2 equal to zero, then we have a product state which is not entangled at all. And then only one of the two blobs, this large blob, uh, for example, uh, exists. Then all the chaotic, all the chaotic uh, trajectories disappear. If we have a product state, the Bohmian equations of motion become decoupled, and then we have only ordered trajectories. Then we moved uh, with professor in the case three qubits where we can't have a geometric, uh, an immediate geometric picture. And this is uh, forgiven. Um, this is uh, the psi squared in the case of, oh, excuse me, in the case of three qubits where large, with large entanglement or small entanglement, the different colors uh, correspond to different time <laughs> instances. The nodal point exponent complex mechanism is based on this figure. This is a typical nodal point exponent complex where in the moving fr in the frame of the moving nodal point, you see that n here is centered at zero. Okay, you have um, very close to the nodal point. There is a second point which is stagnant, a fixed point in this coordinate system, which is called the x point, uh, and has two eigenvalues, uh, one positive re uh, real eigenvalues, one positive and one negative. And here you see the invariant curves. The red curve um, goes inside very close to the nodal point in a spiral way, while the other uh, make a loop around them. So whenever you have trajectories in the close region of the X point, they actually get scattered, they deviate in a chaotic way. And whenever you have um, the cumulative, the cumulative action of many such scattering events uh, results to the production of house in Bohmian mechanics. And this was um, proved by Professor Gondogros and Christos and Kostas Kalapotharakos back in 2007 and in 2009, and was proved to be general for a generic wave function. So in this model here, we have uh, it, it is the nature of this model that uh, facilitates the Bohmian calculations because in the 2D case, we can find the positions of the nodal points as a function of time analytically. And since the coherent states we know from quantum mechanics um, include um, a spectrum which is composed of uh, infinitely many uh, energies, distributed by Poisson distribution, here we find that the nodal points are actually infinitely many, and their position is given by this formula in the 2D case. This has been generalized in the 3D case, in the 4D case, and in our final paper, we make 
we made an extension up to the n qubit case. So every qubit, uh, so every qubit state, whether it's about uh, whether we are talking about two qubits, three qubits, or four qubits, we have infinitely many nodal points and thus x points moving around the configuration space and scattering the incoming Bohmian trajectory. So, in the case of two qubits, we found nodal points aligned on straight lines, okay, moving uh, uh, in the configuration space. The distance between the uh, blue balls, the different nodal points, changes with time. They rotate, they have uh, a very specific motion, okay. In the 3D case, we have what we call, I don't know if it's correct to say, this word nodal seeds. And in the fourth qubit case, we have nodal boxes. Here you have three dimensions. Actually, it is a projection, a projection of the 4D uh, space um, in the 3D space. Okay, so we are we have very, very complicated uh, behavior of the nodal of the Bohmian trajectories due to the many scatter to many uh, scattering events between them and the nodal point exponent complexes. Okay, in the case of two qubits, we have that uh, if we remove entanglement by choosing properly the um, by by choosing C two equal to zero, okay, then we have perfect Lissajou curves. These are the product states in the case of two qubits. While obviously in the uh, three qubits uh, case, we have 3D Lissajou curves. You see this box. And this can be extended in n qubit states, but without geometrical, with easy geometrical depiction. The nature of, this, of our system is such that House is produced whenever the two blobs of the wave function collide. Um, in the intermediate times between the collisions of the two blobs, our system uh, tends to follow a Lissajou-like um, behavior. Okay, and this Lissajou plates figures uh, are uh, are formed in the course of time, covering and uh, all the support of the wave function. The support of the wave function is the area of the configuration space where psi squared is not negligible. So if you uh, integrate for a large time the Bohmian trajectories, then you see a very, very uh, complex figure, which is actually produced by many, many Lissajou figures <laughs> And in the intermediate time, we have Houting scattering events. You're speaking about uh, psi that are colliding. Okay. If you take uh, a tough equals zero, you want to plot psi, psi squared. Okay. Then you see that in this model, okay, you have two blobs, two close to Gaussian blobs. If you let uh, the time flow, then you see that these two blobs evolve, okay? And sometimes they they do this motion. They make a, uh, a rotational motion and then they collide. When they collide, the nodal points, X points uh, come into play and they um, scatter the trajectories. Mm -hmm. And then the, the two blobs are reformed. Okay. Uh, so, the other, like, two wave, two... Imagine two blobs uh, colliding okay. with a straight collide, and then they are re, uh, reborn. Okay, and again and again and again in, in the in the course of time. Between the collisions, you have such uh, this kind of trajectories. Mm -hmm. It's like having no house, but when you have the collision at those times, you have a peak. Uh, you have a deflection from one Lissajou curve to another. Okay, that's why the chaotic trajectories are able to cover all the support of the wave function. They can travel everywhere in this case. Okay, in the 3D case and in the 
decays, we, we can work only with projections. But the rule is the same. We have 3D or 4D Lissazou figures. And between them, between those different Lissazou uh, boxes, okay, or hyper boxes, you have the scattering uh, collisions, the scattering events. So the rule is whenever we have collision of the blobs or the hyper blobs of the uh, of psi square, then you have uh, the production of half. You have scattering events. So Born's rule in Bohmian quantum mechanics. This is Born and Bohm, okay, in this figure. So what we find is that every chaotic trajectory in the two qubit case, which is actually the two D case, because every qubit is actually another uh, coordinate. Because the qubits are defined on a certain axis. Okay, so two qubits, we are going about to talk about trajectories in the X psi configuration space. Three qubits, X psi, X psi Z. Four qubits, X psi Z, W. Okay, so whenever we integrate for a large amount of time a uh, Bohmian trajectory, which is chaotic, we found that the pattern, the pattern of the uh, of the distribution of its points is always the same in this model. Okay, so you see this figure here, which uh, which refers to the three D case, or here to the two D case. Here it's more simple. Whichever uh, every initial condition that produces chaotic trajectories, if you make a discrete grid of, um, of cells in the configuration space and count the number of the passages in every cell, then you are going to find this distribution. That's why uh, it, reminded, it reminded us of uh, ergodic trajectories. And this is for a single trajectory, and this is for a large ensemble of chaotic trajectories. That's why the numbers are much uh, bigger here. But the clue is that you do not have to integrate every Bohmian trajectory in order to find its um, contribution in the uh, dynamical approach of, Bro of Bohm Bohm's, uh, Bohm's rule. So this happens also in the 3D case, where here you find uh, the 3D distribution uh, of a single trajectory, and here you have a multi-particle trajectory. Yeah. Well, another naive question. So these uh, blobs, mm -hmm. if I correspond a particle, an electron inside a this, which, condenser. What is the, this color here? No, no, I mean, you are these uh, psi functions that mm -hmm. you try to compute then after the Bohmian trajectories in an uh, harmonic oscillator potential. This is the motion of a particle, an electron for an electron, for example. This is a difficult question. No, 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 no. Again. Psi squared is the probability density. Of something. Of finding of finding a particle in the certain region space. So uh, this probability density evolves in time. And we find that whenever the two blobs, the two areas of a single particle always okay, well, psi, psi squared does not refer to a single particle. Psi squared is psi squared. If you want to distribute Bohmian particles. Psi squared is the wave function of a single particle. Yes, but here we are talking about single, the, the motion of the single uh, uh, Bohmian trajectory and multi-particle Bohmian trajectories. You can't, uh, how can you uh, study Bohm's rule? Only with multi-particle distributions. And so this, we are talking about many particles. Yes, here. Many electrons, for example. Here, here in the in the, uh, in the right figure. Here you have a single Bohmian trajectory. All of the single Bohmian trajectories have this pattern, this long time pattern. Okay. So if you uh, make a super, uh, if you um, um, if you study at the same time multiple Bohmian trajectories, okay you'll see that since you have ergodic pattern, they all 
going to give this pattern. Because, uh, okay, we will speak because the idea when you spoke about that, the Pauli, uh, the law of Pauli, that they can that electrons cannot be in the same quantum state came to mind, and I wonder if your study can't have something to say about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, because I'm talking about particles mm -hmm. that have orbits mm -hmm. distributed in a phase space, mm -hmm. and you know that the, the, the Pauli principle, if I'm not mistaken, you don't have you cannot have it in the same uh phase space mm -hmm. the same cell two electrons with the same exactly uh parameters, the same spin, the same kinetic energy. That's right. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. So this can be Tell us something about it. No, no, I don't think so. Because when you work with a, a wave function, with a wave function, uh, we are talking. Every wave function has a mean energy, has a mean a mean value of energy. Okay. So what we do here is maybe simplistic, but we want to try to see the long time pattern of the distribution of points of a healthy trajectory. And you are inside a machine. Uh, harmonic oscillator. Yes. Okay. So harmonic oscillator has some discrete energy levels. Oh, yeah. So and I'm not, and I'm not here sure. in the coherent stage. Maybe this is the, the answer. Every coherent state has a spectrum of energies inside it. A coherent state is um, mathematically uh, is uh, written as a sum of of an infinity number. Of energies, but they are not discrete. If you are in a, in a, in a, uh, an oscillator in a potential, which is a no, 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 here we are uh, solving the Bohmian trajectory for, psi for a given time. At a certain instance of time, psi has those psi. No, 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 no. Bohmian equations. Bo Bohmian equations. Psi blocks, the psi distribution moves. Moves. You stop. We no, no, no. We do not stop it. We, we, we find the Bohmian trajectories in time as psi, as psi evolves. And whenever psi the, the blocks of psi just collide, then we see that the, the corresponding Lissajou curve makes a jump to another one, and to another one, and to another one. And it, 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 it takes place almost instantaneously. And the sum of all these trajectories. Yes, and so, yes, yes. This is just a, a very large time series. Okay, and we, we count the number of passages of this trajectory of the other trajectory in every cell of uh, our grid. And this was extended also in the 4D case where we have 4D, four qubits, X, Y, Z, and W. And we find exactly, uh, it was our last paper with professor, uh, we found exactly the same results, but here, okay, here we can work only with projections for a given W. Uh, in order to depict our results. So our final, final conclusion um, was this one. <coughs> Here you see C2, which is, which actually is uh, the coefficient with which we can control the entanglement because according to quantum mechanics, uh, we have Psi equal C1, Ket zero plus C two ket one, where uh, where ket zero and ket one could be consisted of many many uh, different qubits, but C one and C two, if they are equal, uh, then you have the maximal entangled state, the maximum amount of entanglement. Uh, in the n-dimensional space, okay, where, where n is the number of your qubits. So if you take C1 equal to, 
then you have the maximum entangled state. And then the two blobs in the case of two qubits become equal. So you have two blobs here, which are identical, and they move uh, around the space and they get collided. If you take C2 smaller, then one of the two blobs uh, gets shrinked. And if you take C2 equal to zero, it disappears. So we have only one blob and the, all the trajectories are ordered. So we need house in order to uh, come close to the Born rule if uh, we want to, to, to start with an, uh, initially with an initial distribution that does not does satisfy it. What uh, we found lately in our last paper, and probably our final discussion, final conclusion in these cases, um, is that here, where you see uh, C2 equal to almost 0 0.7, you have the maximally entangled state. Okay. And C2 equal to 0, you have the product state. We found numerically. It's very difficult to uh, to work analytically that the proportion of chaotic trajectories inside the distribution of Born rule uh, gets bigger as we increase the number of qubits. So two qubits is a very very simple system. Okay, we may we uh, it is difficult for us to calculate all the Bowman trajectories. We have problems with calculations, but as a physical system, it is a very easy, very simple system. So if here the red one, the red uh, curve corresponds to two qubits, and you see that uh, the bond distribution um, is dominated for a very large entanglements close to the maximally entangled state, by chaotic trajectories. And since the chaotic trajectories have all the same uh, long time pattern, you can choose every initial distribution that you want. And after some time, you are going to, to, uh, to finally reach Bohr's rule. What is the maximum entanglement state? It's uh, psi equal. The maximum, what value is C2? Is uh, uh, 0.7. Είναι ρίζα 2 δευτερ. 0,707. Θέλετε, σε ένα C1 equal C2 uh, and C1 squared and C2 squared equal to 1. Okay. However, when, whenever we increase the number of qubits, the um, chaotic trajectories become dominant inside the Born's distribution. And that's why in multi qubits, we, we initially this was just a conjecture, but now we believe that this is correct. That in multi qubit states, say n over than 10, okay, 10 qubits, 20 qubits, all the Bohmian trajectories of this system are going to be chaotic and are good. So, house is important. It is absolutely necessary in order to start wherever you want with, a, with initial distribution of particles everywhere in the configuration space and reach Born's rule. That's why this is the only work in the literature here in Arkham that is based on the behavior of single Bohmian trajectories. All the results all, uh, about the evolution of Bohmian trajectories are more or less qualitative. Here we are trying to, to, to study uh, every quantity okay. by single Bohmian trajectories. And this could not be made without Professor Kondoglos because actually it's a dynamic system theory. You have run the orbits long enough. Yeah. I'm saying that if you wait much, much, much longer, won't they all go to form? Uh... This, this, uh, yes. Uh, obviously, uh, this demands a huge computational. So, what we're thinking here is physical, or is it an issue of numerical? You haven't waited yes. long enough. All of them go to one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. You, you are totally right. You have right. Uh, this, uh, we have limitations by our computational time. Okay. 
for but this the, the times that uh, were involved here were about 50 or 100 million uh, times times what? of the of the largest frequency of the system. You have three frequencies, omega x, omega psi, omega z, okay, or omega and omega w in the case uh, of four qubits. And we are working always with irrational, irrational, uh, non-conventional frequencies in order to avoid periodic orbits. Is it easy to have physical times? No, I don't think that is very easy to have physical times. And actually, all of these results uh, if I may say so, they have very big technical difficulty because the integration of Bohmian trajectory is very close to the nodal point is actually a nightmare for the, for, uh, for the computer. So we need uh, for some of them, uh, the calculation time was two days, three days for one of them. No, maybe physical times. Uh, yeah, physical. Uh, no. In one second, no, we do not have we don't have such um, no, I know we don't have a physical extrapolation here. We don't we didn't have a physical extrapolation. We are working with mathematics. Actually, it's a, the, the very it's a very start. It's the starting point of doing such things. Another question: If you have started with the distribution of psi square, then you will be at one. So you start. If you start putting the, the particle where size uh, according to size square, then you would be no, 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 no. This, this, no, this figure say, uh, shows the number of the chaotic trajectories inside the Born distribution. You take 10,000 yes. of, of initial. That's what I'm saying. If you had started with 10,000, all following the Born distribution. This is here. Exactly here. Yeah, but uh, Bohmian tells us that if you start with the Born distribution, then you are going to stay on the Born distribution. Correct. You never deviate from Correct. It. So you are at one and you stay at one. No. Right? Start the, the, what is this one? This is the number I, I, I have. One million of initial conditions and integrate all of them inside the bond distribution. Yeah. Okay, okay. And see, I have a way to see after 50,000 after this yeah. out, uh, that they are chaotic or ordered. The number, the ratio between the, 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 the total number and the chaotic uh, trajectories is that. Here, this tells us how many chaotic trajectories. How many chaotic trajectories in a given ensemble, which is taken according to Born's rule. Okay, so you have the, the two blobs which are produced by Born's rule. So distribute you distribute a large ensemble of initial points according to them, and you say that this proportion. This, 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 okay, uh, refers to chaotic trajectories. You have very little number of, of order trajectories here. But why here you have a, a significant number of order trajectories? Okay, so whenever you add qubits, Born's rule becomes, uh, get, uh, gets formed by only chaotic trajectories. This is in the, the limit of n going to infinity. That is our statement, that whenever we add a qubit, actually what we do is increase the number of chaotic trajectories inside Born's rule. And since then, since they are ergodic and have the, 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 the same pattern with the chaotic trajectories everywhere in the space, that's why Born's rule is going to be accessible in the long run. Okay. Maybe I, I get you confused. All of, all of that experiment is done with particles that initially followed the, the board distribution. Followed board This, uh, this figure. All of this followed board Excuse me. If you take 
I, I have this figure here. If you take Bohmian trajectories, many Bohmian trajectories, which are uh, distributed in another way, initially in another way. I, I throw. You haven't done that experiment. This is not what, what you have done here. You here, start with not following the. the yes. Experiment. Then you see that in the long run, you are going to reach uh, the, the long the, the the patterns that I showed you before. And where is the condition it coming from? They are going to reach these patterns, these patterns, because they are ergodic and have the same long time pattern with the chaotic trajectories inside Bond's room. Να το πω στα ελληνικά. Στα Έχουν οι χαοτικέ, έχουν παντού το ίδιο τελικό αποτέλεσμα, το πούμε έτσι, την ίδια κατανομή σωματιδίων στο χώρο. Οπότε το θέμα είναι το εξή. Οι χαοτικέ εντό του Bond's rule, από τη στιγμή που είναι εργοδικέ, είναι ακριβώ οι σάξει με τι άλλε, in the long run. Αν λοιπόν εσεί ξεκινήσετε και έχετε. Το ακριβώ εισάξιε. Εισάξιε. Δεν είναι σωστό. Αυτό το πείραμα δεν ναι. έχετε τρέξει εδώ. Θα πρέπει να τρέξετε και το άλλο πείραμα. Ποιο? Να βάλετε αρχέ συνθήκε οπουδήποτε και να δείτε τι ποσοστό, σε τι ποσοστό πιάνουμε το, το Born Rule. Δηλαδή να δοκιμάσετε για σε δύο ίσω πόλει του mm. με άλλε αρχικέ συνθήκε. Mm. Όχι με αυτέ που ακολουθούν το, 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 mm. το Born Rule. Και να δούμε αν το πιάνουμε. Και όταν λοιπόν τελειώσει, σύμφωνα με αυτά που λέτε εδώ πέρα, μόνο το 80% το, 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 το που λέγαμε ότι θα ακολουθούν τον Born Rule, τα υπόλοιπα δεν θα ακολουθούν τον Born Rule. Κάτι τέτοιο υπονοείται. Αλλά πρέπει να τρέξει το πείραμα ότι αν φύγω από τον Born Rule αρχικά, πόσο κοντά θα είμαι στο τέλο. Και αυτό. Αν, αν είναι αυτό που λέτε η ισοδύναμη τη εργοδική, θα λέει ότι μόνο κατά 80% θα έχω φτιάξει τον κόμμα. Ε, να, το, να το συζητήσουμε λίγο μαζί. Θέλετε να. Από μένα τελείω. Σω. So. Okay. So, our conclusion. We come up with our conclusion. That in the 40 days, there is a remarkable increase of the chaotic ergodic trajectories for every non-zero entanglement in comparison with the two qubits. Case due to the and the three qubit case due to the increase uh, significant increase of the nodal point x point complexes around the configuration space. So our main conclusion is that by increasing the dimensionality of our system, the number of nodal points and x points uh, grows up significantly, and so does the number of the chaotic trajectories. Therefore, Born's rule distribution will be accessible after very long times to the vast majority of initial preparations in multi-qubit systems. So, thank you. If you want, uh, let me also check uh, if there are questions from. Uh, okay, there is a question. Well, uh, I, I want to take the question first from the audience and then. Hello. Hello. So, Hello. Please, yeah, yeah. With Hello, your, go ahead with your question. And first of all, I want to uh, express my thanks for this wonderful uh, discussion. And my question is that uh, when the wave function of the qubits are entangled, uh, then it has shown that there were some chaotic trajectories uh, in the uh, in the two two D qubits. So, can we apply this? approach of trajectories to quantum information and uh, do the occurrence of chaos is a hindrance of hindrance to the applications in quantum information using uh, quantum qubits can i answer yes yes, yes. one uh, uh, one difficult task in Bohmian quantum mechanics is uh, exactly your what you are talking about we are trying to find the relation, the interplay between house and entanglement from a trajectory uh, standpoint. Uh, you may know a lot of things about quantum entanglement and standard quantum mechanics, but one difficult question is how to understand uh, quantum entanglement by studying the the traject the, the, the Bohmian trajectories, the shape, house, order 
And this is something very difficult. I think it is, uh, it's, it is a, a question about uh, this interplay and we are not ready at all to talk about applications, at least at this point. These are actually the only, these are actually the only works where the uh, Bohmian trajectories are studied simultaneously from an uh, entanglement point of view, from a uh, house point of view, and their interconnection. So I think that the answer at this time is negative. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I ask one more question? Please. Uh, so, while defining the system, uh, how how did you uh, uh, how did you define it as a cubic sphere? Uh, so you you have done the work in two you have uh, two qubits, have. multiple qubits, and uh -huh. first at first you you are telling about a coherent state, and is what were the conditions you applied? Uh, for considering it to be. Uh, I don't know if I understand correct, but we have in a single dimension uh, the definition of the qubit, which is psi equal uh, C1 A uh, ket zero, but where ket zero corresponds here in the left, uh, the right coherent state, and one corresponds to the left coherent state. So these coherent states, if you see the papers in the bibliography, uh, then you'll see that are constructed, their physical properties, the, um, the parameters are taken in a such a way that the inner product uh, in Hilbert space is very, very close to zero. So from a quantum mechanical point of view, they are considered to be almost orthogonal. On, uh, uh, this was a practical way to define Bohmian qubits. Otherwise, it is very, very difficult. As you know, Bohmian quantum mechanics is a, a position-based um, trajectory. It's a trajectory theory. While in standard quantum mechanics, it is always easy to talk about qubits because you have spin-based qubits. So you have spin up or spin down. Uh, spin cannot be easily studied uh, in the framework of Bohmian mechanics. So you want to construct qubits in the, in the position representation. And this was our way to, of doing so. Thank you. And in the case of three qubits and four, uh, two qubits, three qubits and four qubits, we are actually taking the, the tensor product of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. So then we may move to, move to the discussion in the room. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, let me ask you something. How do you classify your orbits as chaotic or ordered? Uh, you can, uh, we are working with uh, Lyapunov. Uh, Lyapunov. Characteristic. Uh, uh, no. yes. So yes. The we, haven't, we haven't calculated all the Lyapunov for, for no. billions of, but we see that the Lyapunov uh, number is uh, positive. But the decision is clear cut. I mean, I've seen these jumps that you had in there. Yes, this is a one. Well, in, there was a clearly by eye. <laughs> Uh, chaotic orbit, but there was another one that was, uh, I would say, sticky in the yeah. yeah. Uh, so how 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 well does the Yapuno for uh, uh, criterion uh, there works? How can uh, you be sure that this is an order to the chaotic? Okay, we, we are not okay. Of course, do we insist more uh, integrating more in time, or how? Do you yes, we integrate. We have uh, calculated the Yapuno for numbers of typical. Uh, how the trajectories are around the space and compare it with a, with their figure, mm. with the, the figure of the trajectory itself. And we found, we never found that the uh, positive Lyapunov uh, number was corresponding to a rather uh, ordered trajectory. Uh, so we have the ordered trajectories with us very close to Lissadou, something like this yeah, ordered one. Yeah. And the chaotic trajectories, which actually- it was exactly a diffusion. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if you have more questions, Jan, of course, this is Jan. I would like to return to my first question. Yeah. 
you are doing an experiment with a million particles and you have a distribution for them when you start. <laughs> and then you say, so at t equals zero, you have a million particles distributed like this. Mm -hmm. And then you say, I am going to follow, those particles are going to follow the wave function. But the wave function at t equals zero mm -hmm. has, let's say, another distribution of particles. <laughs> This is another wave function for another problem. Why don't you say I have a million particles distribute, distributed likewise? This is my initial condition for my wave function. And then I evolve that with the Schrodinger equation. And that's what I put in my in my in my volume trajectories. How is it possible that at equal zero the two distributions are different? Why do you even consider the not satisfied? Actually, you can start. I don't know if this is a good answer, but Bohmian quantum mechanics. Um, in every course of quantum mechanics, first you have to normalize the wave function. Okay, just in order to be uh, compatible with Bohm's rule. Okay, so if you take if you do not take uh, into consideration the normalization constant that you always have to calculate when you start with a wave function, Bohmian mechanics do not see the, this constant. If you see the other form of the equations. You can always go back and say you have one million orbits. I divide by one million, I normalize my, my, my problem. Yes, but this is not forbidden. Why is this forbidden? Why is this forbidden to start here with particles it's around? Something different. Yeah. You say I have a different distribution of particles, then you're doing a different problem. This is not the same problem. You're, you're, you, you tell your particles to follow. You tell your particles to follow this distribution, which at equal zero is different from what you have. So it's a different problem. No, it's not the same, same problem. At equal zero, your particles are distributed likewise. You should have psi square to be exactly the same. Otherwise, if psi square is like this, it's not the same problem. Yes. So uh, we want to try to see if it will reach psi square. We never doubt about but psi if square. You have changed psi square and try this psi square, mm -hmm. then you will have more rule. Mm -hmm. Then you will never. Uh, find, otherwise, you, you could never find psi square. If it was different from how is it possible at t equal zero when you start your particles? How is it possible the distribution that you try to be different from the initial condition of your problem? You can do it mathematically mm -hmm. here, but you are not allowed to do it physically if you believe in Bohmian trajectory. I don't, I don't think I have. I, I agree with this method. You can, in principle, start with a never with with ever distribution you want here. Why? Right. Then, then, then a single a single Bohmian trajectory is meaningless. But the distribution has all the meaning. Exactly. But the distribution has all the meaning. So at equal zero, mm -hmm. you say this is my distribution. Fine. How am I going to evolve that distribution with a wave function? Perfect. What is the initial wave function? It is this. Uh, no, 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 this is another problem. I don't want to do that. You shouldn't do that because it's another distribution, different distribution. I don't know. At t I don't know the answer. Zero, not in time, at t equals zero, you're doing a physical problem which at t equals zero should have the same, the distribution that we started with. I, I, we agree, one trajectory doesn't mean anything. Five, ten, a thousand trajectories do not mean anything, but a million trajectories is a distribution. I don't think that I have an answer, a straight answer to this question. I don't, I, but I don't, I, there is no limit to the initial distribution. It should be the same. No, they should not be the same. You can take whatever whichever distribution we want in the start. But then you're solving a different problem, not a physical problem. It's not, of course, it's not a physical problem. We will try to, to understand if we can reach Bohm's rule with other distributions. 
This is what you're showing here, but it's not, as you said, and I think we agree now, that it's not a physical thing. Yes, because we never, nobody, nobody doubts about the validity of one's rule. We never have uh, experiments that uh, say that Bond's rule is not, uh, is not valid. It's actually uh, a mathematical question. Then we agree. Yeah. It's a mathematical correct question, yeah. but that means it is, you can say, physical, we can... it is not a physical problem. It's yes, it's a problem. Small. It's a problem. It's an open question in Bohme and quantum mechanics. It's not a problem, of, uh, certainly a, gener a generic problem in physics. You never, you, you can never test this mathematical uh, hypothesis. If it is not a physical problem, why are we discussing it? Because we want to we want to try to understand the role of chaotic and order trajectories in Boomian theory. Okay, I think that uh, the discussion can continue okay. after the end of for the uh, of the talk and uh, the registering of the talk. So if you because if you don't have anything else, so is anybody else who wants to ask something? Then we may stop here and uh, you guys may continue mm -hmm. after the end of the talk. So thank the speaker again. Uh, you will be informed about the next seminar in our series uh, as usual by the email announcement. Thank you for following. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. And well,